the Rhone region of France, and you can tell that my bottle was slightly too chilled, <laughs> but I poured it and let it let it lay out for a while. Um, so this is the Sauvage um, Syrah Grenache blend from Ventu from M. Pichon. Uh, and it is mainly Syrah. I think it's 70% Syrah, 30% Grenache. So mainly a Syrah, um, but you'll definitely get a little bit of Grenache in there as well. Um, so let's see, before I dive too deep into the wine itself. So M. Pichon, really wonderful female winemaker out of the Rhone region. Um, I believe that she named it Sauvage because of some sort of like general attachment to nature, which makes sense because she's making natural wines. Um, something about, I'm assuming, you know, Sauvage, like Savage, more wild, et cetera. Um, she has been doing this since way before it was popular. I think she started doing this in the 1990s. And generally, I would say all of her wines are more rustic, more of like the type of um, stealth natural wines where like you would, I would have no idea this was a natural wine unless I, you know, looked it up and learned about them. It doesn't have any of that craziness about it. Um, and like the label, I would say, is just pretty as you would expect. So with that in mind, let's go into a smell of it. So up at the top, it's pretty, um, it's like very ripe. And what is it that is ripe? It's like, berries, I guess plum, it's some kind of berry, blackberry, but like, it's not like very heavy. Um, there's something else there too. I know it's like on the tip of my tongue. Maybe it'll come to me when I'm doing the tasting. And then on the bottom, Definitely more dark fruit, so like dark cherries. Um, I would say a little bit of that fruit roll-up vibe, but nothing crazy. Like this is, like I said, like a pretty traditional, more rustic style of Rhone wine. Um, probably like, yeah, like some, like a little gamey or meaty, leathery, tobacco-y, like all that stuff that you kind of generally expect from a Rhone. That's there. And it's interesting because it's kind of like when you're down here, I'm like, oh, it's jammy. But then when I'm up here, it doesn't seem jammy at all. It's like, maybe it's like lighter berries, like a strawberry. I think I said raspberry already, but that's probably the main one I'm getting. So as I would say, or as I've been saying, and you might've noticed, um, it's mainly fruit forward, but it does have some of the secondary notes, like I said, with tobacco and leather and all the other things you would expect. So that makes it really, you know, like this isn't just your glue glue wine, like this is, this wine's going to do something um, and probably be able to age for a bit. So let's try it. Tasty. Oh, man. So there's more tannin in here than I remember. And mine is still a little bit chilled. So probably even more if it was less warm. Oh, for serving, by the way, I should mention, like, I just kept mine in the fridge and I've been leaving it out for a while. But especially for this one, ideally like no more than probably like 20 minutes in the fridge, I would say that's maybe 30 max. Like I would don't think you want this wine to be super cold. Um, it's definitely gonna do better if it's just more like true cellar temperature. So let's revisit it. Jammy, like whatever. I mean, like it's still got grape acid but the tannin I would say is definitely more of what I'm left with. Um, but the, whatever, like that initial, like brightness was that we were seeing at the top of the glass, uh, it has really like, we're really seeing mainly just the jamminess of it here, but all those other notes with it, you know, so it's still got like the berries there. It has that leather note, has little like tobacco, all the rest of it. Um, I'm, I assume that if it was warmer, it would probably be, I'd probably be getting more of that than I am right now. Um, so it's got, it's got a lot going on. It's a really lovely stealth natural wine. So with all that in mind, man, this is really good food wine. Um, you could definitely go with lighter meats for this. You could go with your pork. So you could go with your chickens. I would not go with any fish because it's definitely got the suntanning going. You could even do like, oh man, you know what this would be good with? Like beef stroganoff, something about the, the type of beef that's used for that and like the little bit of like creaminess, I feel like would be so good here. Um, I'm also probably thinking about like, you know, like we're talking about the Rhone here. So I'm thinking a lot about like Lyonnaise food, which is like very, very rich. 
um like chicken cordon bleu could be really nice basically like something that has like a creaminess to it and also meat that's like very I feel like it was very Leonese um so you can't go wrong with any of that anything else oh and if we want to just go like southern for a minute like a uh, chicken fried steak I'd never eat chicken fried steak but if I was gonna eat a chicken fried steak I feel like this would be pretty good <laughs> So that's kind of a weird direction to go in, but generally think about Leonese food, cream sauce and meat. I really think that's what this goes with. There's tons of other options, but that's that's my take on it today. So enjoy. <laughs> 